Hello everybody, in today's tutorial we're going to take a look at Giants by Dermot Kennedy. The tabs and music will appear on screen throughout this tutorial, but if you want to download the PDF or the Muse score file of the score that I'm reading from today, you can do so via the Patreon link below. Also be sure to check out the playlist that I've linked below which has other free tabs and resources for ukulele. And finally, there are timestamps for each section of this video, so feel free to hop around as you like. So we're going to start with the chords used. I've transposed the song to C major to suit the ukulele. The song is originally in B major or G sharp minor, which is a semitone below where we're at now. So in C major, the chords in the song are going to be A minor, or chord 6, G major, or chord 5, C major, or chord 1, and F major, which is chord 4. So the first thing we're going to look at in the song is the chord pattern as it happens in the chorus of the song. We start on A minor and there's a very distinct rhythmic ostinato that ties the chord progression and chord pacing together. A rhythmic ostinato is simply a pattern of rhythm that happens to repeat throughout a song. If you've seen my Shape of You tutorial, which is linked above now, you'll know that we covered the Tracia rhythm in that video. The Tracia rhythm has a rhythm that goes And the song Giants uses an alteration of that rhythm. So this is what the chorus pattern sounds like in Giants. One, two, three, four. So we start out with a dotted quaver, semi-quaver tied to a crotchet which closely emulates the Tracia rhythm or the beginning of the Tracia rhythm. So we have one E and a, two E and a. So what is tricky about this chord progression on ukulele is having to change chord on a semiquaver off beat. We have A minor for the first three quarters of beat one, and then we switch to G on the very last semiquaver of beat one. So really slowly, that sounds like this. One E and a. Two, e and a. The next chord in that first bar lands on the third beat and then is sustained for the last two beats of the bar. So all together, bar one sounds like this. One e and a, two e and a, three e and a, four e and a, one e and a, two e and a, three e and a, four e and a. Then we have the exact same rhythm in the second bar, but the chords change. So instead of doing A minor to G to C, we have F to G to A minor. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. The third bar is nearly the exact same as the first bar, although this time we double up on that dotted quaver semi-quaver tied to a crotchet rhythm on chords A minor G and then C to F. Here's how it works. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. And then bar four is an exact copy of bar two, which has F going to G going to A minor. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. And that will get you through the entire chorus and every time the chorus appears. For practice, here's a quick play along of all that we've just done in that pattern.
So the verse pattern is a little bit simpler than the chorus pattern in that we have two sustained chords that are spread evenly over the first bar of the pattern. So bar one has the chords A minor and G. We spend a minimum or two beats on A minor for the first two beats of the bar, and then we go to G for the last two beats of bar one. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Then we have a repeat of the rhythm that we covered in the last section, <clears throat> which goes from F to G to A minor. So we have one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. Then we have a repeat of bar one exactly. So A minor for the first half of the bar, G for the second. And then in bar four, we repeat bar two exactly. So we have one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. All together, one, two, three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. So just before getting onto the bridge pattern, I wanted to discuss a strumming technique that you can try to implement here for a bit more flow. So up until now, we've just looked at strumming downwards on each chord as it comes. And in a very rhythm heavy pattern such as this, that actually might suffice for the entire duration of the song. But if you wanted to add in a bit more percussion by way of backbeat, you could implement the technique of hitting on two and four the ukulele. Let me demonstrate. One. Two, three, four. And then for the verse. The best way of practicing this would be to mute all of the strings here, get the right hand down first or your strumming hand down first, and then adding the chords in after. Really slowly, we're gonna have one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. With chords, one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one. And a tempo. So similarly for the verse, we're doing the exact same thing. So instead of having a long A minor and a long G on the first bar, we're doing one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E. Just apply the same technique as before and you should have it in no time. So lastly, we come to the bridge section. Now the bridge part of a pop song is usually a section in the song that is trying to be in many ways contrasting. 
And this is a perfect example of a bridge that tries to contrast with everything that came before it. Two obvious ways in which Dermot Kennedy sets his bridge aside as a, a completely separate section is on the one hand through harmony. So we now begin our chord progression on chord five or G in C major. And beginning on chord five can have an effect of making everything feel very open and wide. And this is exactly what happens in the bridge, both sonically in terms of the arrangement of instruments, but also in terms of the harmony. I think there's a very open and wide sound to beginning this off on the five chord. The other thing that happens musically here is we go to half time. So where before all the chords were closely confined to a one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and the pace moved quite quickly on the chords. Now we have the feel of one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. This is called halftime feel. And in order to make the score a bit easier to read and manage, I actually wrote everything with that larger one, two, three, four. So in bar one of the bridge, we have G major for three beats. Then we change to F major on beat four. And then in bar two, we land on C major for three beats. And the same rhythm then we on beat four, we have A minor. Bar three of the bridge is the same as bar one. So we have G for three beats and on beat four, we have F. And then on beat four, we have what is known as an irregular bar. So we're in four, four for this entire piece, except for bar four of the bridge. And in bar four, we have a two, four bar and sounds like this. Coming in from bar three, we have G, one, two, three, four, one, two, one, and then we start on bar one again of the bridge. The other thing to point out on the score is that we've got a first time bar line and a second time bar line. So what this means is we play bars one to four as written there, and then we come back to repeat on bar one and two, but then we skip the first time bar and go straight to the second time bar. So all together, here's what the bridge sounds like. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So the last thing to say before I wrap up is on the score, there's also the song form. Just pay particular attention to how long in bars each section should go for. And then it's just about substituting in at the appropriate place the various patterns that I talked about today. If you have any questions at all, please let me know via the comments. And if you have any suggestions of songs that you'd like to see covered on ukulele, please also drop them in the comments. Thank you so much as always for watching. And if you haven't already, please consider hitting subscribe. I really do appreciate every little bit of support I can get on the channel. This has been David Kennedy and I'll see you in the next one.